Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Continue talking about random variables and uh, its characteristics. We have introduced uh, in the previous lecture um, two new characteristics of the random variable, variance and standard deviation. And I would like to present um, just a very simple problem where I'm basically calculating these characteristics. Just to make, you know, certain um, practical, maybe, uh, usage of these. And uh, uh, our uh, task for today is, we have the following problem which we would like to solve. Um, the random variable we are talking about is a sum of two numbers which um, we get when rolling two dice. Right, so we have two regular um, perfect dice and we have a sum of the, uh, of the two numbers which are rolled on, on these dice. This is a random variable because depending on certain circumstances this sum of two numbers takes different values, obviously. And what I'm interested in is what's my expectation, what's my variance and what's my standard deviation of this random variable. All right. I think the ver very convenient way to represent the values of um, my random variable is in the matrix, where I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So my row number would be the first dice and my column number would be my second dice. On the crossing I will have the sum obviously. So it's two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, since every um, dice has six different uh, numbers it, it, it can actually show, the two dice which are independently rolled together will have six times six different pairs. Um, so all these are represented in this square. Now we are interested in the particular random variable which is a sum which is inside of this. So to represent the variable we need to know uh, which values it takes and apparently the values are from 2 to 12, right? Um, and what's the probability of each value? Now, in, in the previous examples we usually use something like equal probabilities. In this case it's not equal. Why? Because every combination of two numbers has the same probability. There are 36 combinations, so we have 136 as a probability of each square, if you wish, in this matrix. Now, the number 2 occurs only one, which means that the probability of 2 is equal to 136. The probability of 3, there are two different squares in this matrix, which means either uh, the first uh, dice rolls 2 and the second 1, or the first one rolls 1 and the second 2. Each one of these pairs has 136 probability, but we have two pairs, right? 2, 1 and 1, 2. So the probability of the number 3 is 236. Number 4 occurs in 3 times. So the probability of 4 is 336. Probability of 5 is equal to 
1, 2, 3, 4. 436. Um, probability of six is equal to one, two, three, four, five. So five different combinations. Each one of them has one thirty-six. So there are five of them. So it's five thirty-six. Probability of seven is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. 636. Probability of 8 is equal to 5. 36. Probability of 9 is equal to 4. 36. And probability of 10, 336. Probability of 11, 236. Probability of 12, 136 because there is only one case, 6 and 6, when we can get 12. So, now, this is a full specification of our, uh, our random variable. It takes the value 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and these are probabilities with which these values are taken by our random variable. That's all we have to really know about the uh, random variable, which values it takes, and what's the probability of each value? It's a full description. And that's a sufficient description to calculate uh, expectation, variance, and uh, standard deviation. Now, if I will tell somebody, OK, this is my random variable. It's a full description. Could you evaluate approximately what you will win or lose? And what will be uh, your risk if you play for money, some kind of a game? Let's say you have a game uh, that the sum of numbers will be greater than uh, 5, for instance. If I will ask the question right now, it will probably be very, very difficult to answer just looking at this picture. And especially difficult would be what's the risk involved, right? However, using the expectation and um, standard deviation and variance, we can answer these questions in a, in, in a manner which is sufficient to, intuit, to intuitively feel these particular characteristics of the random variable. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I don't need this square anymore. And let me just address directly the issue of expectation. So this is my random variable C. So, what, what is its expectation? Well, if it takes value 2 with a probability of 136 and value 3 with a probability 236, etc., 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 and value 12 with a probability of 136, that would be my expectation, right? So, I have to make a, a weighted average of these values from 2 to 12, from 2 to 12, and the weights are the corresponding probabilities. For 2, the weight is 136, for 3 is 236, for, I don't know, 10 is 336, it would be somewhere here, and for 12 is 136 again. So this, this is my expectation. Now, I calculated it, and it's equal to 7, which is kind of intuitively obvious. Why? Because if you remember in the previous lecture, I was using just one dice, and I was calculating its um, expectation of the value from 1 to 6. Remember? Oops. From 1 to 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, there is no 7, only 6. And the expectation in this case was right in the middle, which is 3.5. And, and if you remember, the mathematical expectation is an additive function. So if you have two random variables, and now we have basically two random variables. One is the result of the w w one dice, and another result of another uh, dice. Each one of them has 3.5 as a mathematical expectation, right? So the sum of them, considering the expectation is an additive function, should be 3.5 times 2, which is 7. 
All right, now, now I would like to evaluate um, the variance of this particular uh, random variable. And the way I'm doing it is I'm using the weighted average of a square of a difference between this value and the expectation, which is 7, with weights equal to, again, probability. So it's actually exactly the same thing as with um, expectation in terms of this is a weighted average where weights are the probabilities. But in this case, in case of expectation, I'm using directly the values. In case of variance, I'm using squares of a difference between the value and its uh, and, and expectation. So it would be two minus seven square times its probability plus three minus seven square times its probability plus 4 minus 7 square times its probability etc up to the very last one 12 minus 7 square times its probability and I have calculated this it's equal to 5.8 approximately so that's my variance. Now, finally, my standard deviation, it's just the square root of variance, 2.4. Okay, so now we see that our behavior of the random variable can be described in terms of expectation and standard deviation. So the sum would be somewhere around number 7. That's the expectation. That's the weighted average of all the different values of this sum. Um, or if you wish, that's the um, approximate frequency the sum will take if you have many many experiments of uh, rolling a couple of dice but now I can also say that the diversion around uh, this 7 would be different obviously it can be from 2 to 12 but on average diversion would be from 7 to minus 2.4 which is what uh, 4.6 to uh, 9.4 right so this these points represent um, like grouping if you wish of the values to the left or to the right of number seven so my spread around if you wish seven would be different obviously but the average spread would be between these and these okay basically that's it this is just an example of how in this particular case um, expectation variance and uh, standard deviation uh, can be calculated uh, and sort of intuitive understanding um, how we can use these particular uh, characteristics of the uh, random variable to, well, not really predict, but at least to expect something, some behavior um, of, of our random variable um, as, as we progress in, in our experiments with it. So the values would be somewhere around number seven, more or less evenly distributed around it, and uh, uh, the average distance from the seven should be either to the left or to the right should be by 2.4 uh, that's the average weighted average uh, difference that's it for today thanks very much I recommend you to read the notes for this lecture um, and they are obviously on uh, unizor.com 
um, I, I basically recommend to watch the video also from the unizor.com website um, just because you have um, basically the whole curriculum over there in front of your eyes so you can go to some other lecture etc if you forgot something you can go to the previous lecture um, gives you the uh, yeah give you gives you some nice perspective of everything the whole course so that's it thanks very much and good luck